So I have some things I want to do. I, um, I, yesterday I edited episode five of this series. And in that episode, I found that briefcase in Steven's room. So now I know where the damn briefcase is. Even though I thought, I swear, I thought I had rechecked his room, but I guess I must not have. <laughs> I must have made that up. So first things first is opening that briefcase. I also, um, I also realized that there was that clock in that hidden panel. I, I just flat out had forgotten about that to try that time for the tea time clock and to see if that would open it. I just forgot. So we're going to try that as well. So Andrew's autopsy report, third degree burns, 44 year old white male with burns found at home, pronounced dead at the scene, third degree burns across the body, completely charred over the head, face, neck, and hands. Closer inspection reveals punctured lungs with an object similar to a switchblade or a small knife. Body is too burnt to confirm. confirm. Pneumothorax. I don't know what that means. Does that mean perforated or punctured lungs? Ooh. That means he bled to death. I know that word. <laughs> Henry Johnson, 61 year old white male, pulled out of car submerged in lake. Victim's lungs do not contain water, which shows that he did not die by drowning. Due to prolonged submerging of the body in water, the estimated time of death. Might not be accurate. Estimated time of death is between 12 to 16 days. Top right side of skull, leaning towards the front and above right eye, has a wide crack, usually caused by a sharp object and strong force, like an axe. Front torso, face, and back portion of forearms suffer numerous lacerations. Victim most likely succumbed to blood loss before being placed in the water. And Vivian, also exsanguination. 55 year old white female found laying in front of the mansion gates, pronounced that it seen 12 centimeter wide and 7 centimeter deep crack found on the right side of the head. Impact caused by a strong force with a sharp object. Also, like an axe, it sounds like. Jesus. So here's, here's the thing, here's my working theory or part of it. I actually went through and made, I looked at all of the journals again and I wrote out my own timeline for everything that happened. I finally did that. And, um, yeah, it's father Matthew is looking more and more suspect to me. He, uh, wrote so Scott told him, I think it was May 13th, 95, Scott told him what he knew about Sophia. And that is the day that Father Matthew learned that Sophia died. He went to go visit Andrew Reed on June 6th. Matthew wrote in his journal, I need Andrew to confess. And then June 6th, Andrew died. It was June 6th, right? So three days later, whatever, two days later, his body was, you know, autopsied. So, so that alone is like a pretty, that's pretty damning right there. But I don't know that, I don't know that Father Matthew would have killed Dr. Johnson and Vivian as well. He certainly, he wouldn't have killed Scott, right? I think this maybe holds up to my Bernard killed Scott theory. I don't know that Bernard would have killed Vivian or, um, or Dr. Johnson though, or Henry, because I mean, I don't know. Both of these sound like they could be ax wounds. I don't know that I've seen an ax anywhere. We found a knife with old blood on it in Bernard's floorboards. So I'm kind of going back and forth between two of them. Also, Derek to me is a little bit uh, sus as well. But I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Oops. 
What else have we got? Motherfucker. So that dart on the floor was... I actually forget which one of these wasn't there. I'll have to look at it. But it wasn't that little dot. The code for Charles' safe in the gallery is Vincent's birthday. 7741? That did not record. What is this for? I think that was it. Huh. <laughs> Let's check that clock and then get back to the mansion. We've got a couple more things to do there. So this... I can't even see with the reflection. I remember saying that was it's a weird uh it's a weird time for tea time. It is tea time's in the afternoon, but maybe it's not tea time. Maybe it's just whatever that clock says. I don't know. Vincent slash Scott's birthday was June first, I think. Oops. <laughs> I don't know if the month or the day comes first. What the hell? Scott was born June 1st, 1975. Sophia's journal, my baby was born today at 8.20 a.m. June 1st, 1975. Maybe it's like 6 1. Like that? Oh, okay. Great. I still don't know what the chess pieces are for. Ooh, last will and testament of Randall Lewis. I, Charles Roberts, being of sound mind, blah, blah, blah. Huh. Should a boy be born in the Roberts family that is of a direct lineage to Charles Roberts, if he is the eldest son and no others contest, he shall inherit all of the family's fortune upon Charles Roberts' passing. The sole condition to this is the son must be at least 25 years of age. So, uh... The firstborn child of the Roberts family shall inherit 50% of all the family fortune should Charles pass away. Stricken in its entirety. Article 11 shall be added and shall read, Vincent Roberts, born of Charles Roberts and Sophia Miller, um, shall be officially acknowledged as a family member. Trisha came first. Trisha was born about a year before. Okay, it sounds like, yeah, the last will and testament of Randall Lewis, but that's just the guy doing the whatever. <laughs> okay. I cannot believe that Scott killed my wife. It's being spewed all over the media. How? Why? He loves Trisha, and I treated him like my own son. It doesn't make any sense. I visited Scott today. I asked him why he would kill Vivian. He did not answer, but simply looked down on the floor. I wanted an answer so desperately that I nearly rattled his neck. Does he even feel any guilt or remorse for what he's done? I visited Scott again today, knowing that he will be released soon. There just wasn't enough evidence to pin him. He looked thinner than before, but I didn't care. I wanted to know why he killed Vivian. When I asked, he stared at me. I was so angry that I yelled at him. I was about to leave when out of nowhere he said, I pity the ignorant. 
I got drunk last night at the inn. Scott is now a free man. I think I babbled about how much I despised Scott and what I would do to have someone get rid of him. Did I really say that? How did I get home anyways? Oh right, Bernard was with me. He drove me home. Oh dear, um... I've got like six chess pieces. There's the... That's, that's the king, right? With the cross on top? <laughs> I think I had five before finding that one. So the chess pieces are for his desk. So did, does that mean that it was just... I don't think I got the thing to come up saying that we have all of his journals. I'm not sure. Let's just go, let's do it, let's do it this way first. King, Knight, Queen, Bishop. So I don't think I've seen these like letters anywhere. Let's just try that first. King, Knight, Queen, Bishop. The King is the one we just found. That's four. The Knight is five. Oh, have I not found a Queen? That's a Bishop. That's the Queen. One. Uh, four, five, one, nine. So what, what is the rest of our hint? K, K, B, Q, what? Like, there's no... Wait, I just, I took this, didn't I? I took this from here. Four right, six left, three right. Oh, nope, I found that somewhere else. Ooh, okay. Fuck. Four, <laughs> what was it? Four right, six left, three right? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Four right, six left, three right. So does that mean... One, two, three, four, five, Four from four from the right, this is the right. Let's try it that way. That was it. Magdalene Roberts, mother of Charles, dies at age sixty-eight. Hospital reports heart attack is main cause of death. Magdalene Roberts passed away last night at the age of 68. She was visiting her Charles. Her heart failed. Dorothy Patterson, a maid, knocked on Magdalene's door at 7 a.m. Since there was no answer, she assumed Magdalene was still sleeping. So only two hours later, when Magdalene still did not respond, she called Bernard. She wasn't breathing. Dr. Johnson arrived. She had a heart attack. None of this is is new. We even knew that date, I'm pretty sure. We, we have a picture of her now, I guess. Oh, 
Yeah, that's Sophia. From Magdalene. Dear Charles, I received a letter from Dorothy yesterday. She told me everything. What have you done? Does Vivian know? Have you even considered the consequences of your actions? And what of this Sophia? What will you do with her? You made a mistake and you'll need to take responsibility for what you have done. You cannot take her as your wife. You already have one. The scandal cannot be publicly known. It will destroy your political career. But the child is important. So... I am now preparing to visit you. <laughs> Great, thanks, Mom. Okay, what's up with these books? Oh. Our baby daughter is born today. We've named her Trisha. Vivian had to go through a caesarean section. I'm just glad that they're both safe. I feel happy to have a baby in the family. I'm worried for mother might, what mother might say. Who gives a fuck? Live your own life, dude. Uh, this time for mental instability. Yeah, because you're unloading your mom's fucking bullshit onto her. Mom wants a boy. Who the fuck cares what your mom wants? At this point. Like, why? Why would he care so much? Yeah, okay, you felt comfortable with somebody, so... Sophia seems to be hiding as well as she can. Wonder where she could be. Um, I forget the exact date of her death at the, in this moment. I think it was late June, though. Vivian hasn't spoken much since she was discharged from the hospital. Dr. Johnson says she has fully healed. It will take some time for her to adjust. I feel her relationship is deteriorating or suffered permanently. I love Trisha, and I know Vivian does too. It's not your mother's passion for a grandson that's affecting Vivian. It's you projecting that onto her, onto Vivian. Like, you are a conduit for that energy, and that is exactly not helping. That's it, huh? I still, I still don't know. What the fuck? We still don't have all of his journals. I don't understand. Why is it, why is it put like this with the initials? Is there an actual chessboard some somewhere in here that I can look at. I don't know what the fuck to do. That's not the order. That's not the order. What's the order? How do I know the order? There's no chest things in here, right? There was like nothing in this room. Let me go look at that clock. I think that's pretty much right at 10.35. just do this, but no. We can find the timeout. It is somewhere. Fucking now what? Am I supposed to know how to get into that desk? Or open this clock? Nope. Like, again, I could try every single minute. It would just, it would only take a couple minutes. I could just do it. But like, come on, there's... The answer is somewhere. What about you? This is the same time. It's the same time as that other clock. So that wasn't special. This is literally like almost the same asset. What the fuck? 
What was, what was the fucking point of that then? Dorothy, you liked tea time, right? When was it? Wanda liked tea time. Oh my god, what is 7741? What do I still have to get into that requires a four digit code? I wrote some things down, let's see. Um, there's a desk, maybe it's that. There's still something in Bernard's. Oh yeah, the fucking dart puzzle. There's a room in the church that needs a key to open. There's no code. This is it. Oh no. This is it that I can remember. Okay, let's try it. So, um, maybe I can just mix up the same code. Motherfucker. Maybe we can open Bernard's drawer with that dart picture. I'm so pissed, like, I feel like they feel like they've given me uh, enough clues <laughs> and I don't fucking know how to open things still. It was the 18, I think. Um, that's... Shit. Double. <laughs> the outside's double. Double 18. They should have fucking gone rid of these little specs. That's really annoying. So, um... Wait, so that's, that's trip 20. That's 60 plus 50. That, that's right, that's 110. And 18 times 2 would be 32? 36? 36. So it's 146. Minus 9 which is 137. And again, that is a three digit number. To go on a four digit lock. I'm gonna try zero first. A desk key. There was a desk in the tea room with a locked drawer. When the police reported that Vivian was murdered, I was floored. I still don't know what to do. My mind is blank. All I can think is how did this happen? How can Vivian be dead? Everyone's mourning about Vivian's death. People are coming or calling in to express their condolences. Charles hasn't been out of his room for days and Trisha's crying her heart out. Dorothy has been assigning busy work to all the mansion employees. Samuel, our security guard, has been reviewing all the tapes of the past two weeks. Scott was just apprehended for the murder. Is it true? No one would have thought of that. I could never, ever believe that Scott would be capable of killing someone, let alone Vivian. Yet it makes me so mad, I feel confused. Trisha was admitted to the hospital today. She had a nervous breakdown. Her condition's been getting worse. Matthew never believed that his son killed Vivian. He hired some fancy lawyer to defend him. Scott's been released on bail today. I don't think Scott should have been released at all, despite the insufficient evidence. He killed Vivian. I know that he's guilty. Everyone knows it. It's amazing how all of these people went from doubt to certainty without evidence. It's just everybody talking to each other and themselves and like just ramping up to certainty. The maids were cleaning the mansion when they found some stuff belonging to Vivian, a key and some stationery. I asked Charles what he'd like to do with them and he told them to take care of it myself. I brought them back to my place. A key? Did I find that? 
Vivian's death has caused lots of grief to everyone, especially Charles. After hearing how heartbroken Charles was two nights ago, it, I can't bear to see him suffer anymore. Scott should pay for what he did. Yeah. That's it for Bernard. Bernard killed Scott. And Father Matthew possibly killed the other people. Maybe Derek, though. Like, that's possible. Derek was the one. Charles was like, if only Scott never came home. And Derek? No, Bernard heard him say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Derek wasn't there. So I got a key. Uh, okay. Let's try this in that desk at the mansion. In the tea room. Let's go back and forth and back and forth some more. This is Vivian. Although we live in the same house, Charles and I have to speak to each other. Yes, I know. <laughs> That's not new information. The agency has arranged for a new guy to help me. His name is Owen Smith. Owen asked me many things. The brief introduction turned out to be hours long. Agency, huh? Owen called to meet with me today. He had the papers ready for me to sign. He said that the location of the exhibition has been approved. All we need is a down payment. That's great. I signed the papers almost immediately. After that, I, inform I informed our accountant, Helen, to transfer the money from the Roberts Relief Fund since the hospital will be needing it for a while. Owen's been a great help since we brought up the idea of an art gallery for the public. I'm not sure if things could have gone so quickly if it had been some other agent. I owe him that much. The art gallery will, be, will open in three months. We've received most of the artwork from the contributors and artists. All I need to ask Charles is if he would be willing to donate some of his paintings. If this exhibition succeeds, it would be great for uh, it would be good for us and for Payne's Creek. Wait, that's, that was it? Motherfucker, that didn't give me answers. I've gone into everything, almost everything that I have written down here. There's a room in the church, at least one room in the church that's locked. But with a key, a keyhole. In the mansion, there's this clock, there's a room or two upstairs, and the study room desk. Was there something in the sheriff, in the sheriff's outpost cabin, maybe? It's been so long since I've been there, so. This, this being on this same piece of paper connects it to the sheriff, and it connects it to Charles, maybe? Vivian and Scott, uh, I guess let's check out the uh, sheriff's outpost. Was there anything left in Oliver's that was locked? I got the feeling that I was pretty done with that place. Where's, where's the grate that I'm supposed to look in? I feel like I've been kind of all over. That'd be so funny if I was missing the one grate that actually had something in it. And I've pulled up all the other ones. That's right, the, um, the cell is locked. It doesn't look like there's anything in there.
Give me that goddamn key. To the glove box? What is that? Keychain, glasses, and a wooden truck. Is that a whistle, maybe? Record of Alibi. I wasn't here when my wife was killed. I left for New York July 18th. Bernard called to inform him. There's an annual religious gathering event in Hartford where pastors from different churches in our state's vicinity meet and discuss what we can do to help our society. The event started July 18th and ran for five days. I represent Paints Creek. Oh, but you didn't go. You said you were sick. I was preparing for the fundraising event when I felt sick. However, there is no one um, who can really do my job, so I kept working. There's no one else that lives there. I live alone. Dorothy Bernard was not feeling well. He took off. I was around the mansion most of the time. I live alone. Mary Martinez. I've been working in the kitchen the past few days. Jimmy's Bakery was supposed to deliver the cakes, but a few days before the event, they called to inform us that they can't make it. And suddenly I was in charge of the cakes. I remember, I remember dropping Mr. Roberts off at the uh, airport. She told me to take a break. I decided to visit a friend of mine who is moving upstate to West Dakota. What sort of friends? An elementary school buddy. I stayed at his place for a few days before coming back to Paints Creek. He can vouch for me. I have his number at home. He's never mentioned this uh, in any of his other writings. The crack in Vivian's skull shows a weapon used as an object with a heavy and sharp end, like an axe. To cause a crack that big, the attacker must be rather strong. I'm assuming it's either a man or a strong woman who is experienced in the use of a weapon. The victim must have been facing the attacker because of the lacerations on the front of her torso, as well as the backside of both forearms, showing that she tried to block the attacks. The fatal strike landed on the right side of the victim's head, just above her right eyebrow. Victim was facing the killer. The killer is strong enough to land such a clean but deadly blow. The killer is left-handed. Of course, that was going to come back up. Since the murder weapon was never recovered and confirmed, my assumption of it being an axe still remains. Since this is me doing you a solid, do not under any circumstances leak this information. Um, we know that Bernard is left-handed, but to be honest, we don't know if Derek is left-handed. Or Father Matthew. Isn't this the flashlight that I picked up? Hmm. <laughs> Wait, what did that tell me? Record of alibi. That 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 told me that Father Matthew is bullshitting the sheriff. That's the biggest piece of information we got. And also that Derek was possibly bullshitting the sheriff as well. Uh, I Fucking, I don't know. I don't... I really don't think that Bernard would have killed Vivian. He said he was surprised, but it's possible because he was taking his medications and then stopped. If he was having trouble, would he hallucinate? Would he black out? Maybe he wouldn't remember doing it? We haven't heard anybody else say that, that they're left-handed. All right, I have a car key. This is my car. I don't need an extra key for it. It might work to get to Steven's glove box. Maybe, maybe it's the other cars. One of the other cars glove box though. Cause why would it be in the lost and found? Oh, 
<laughs> I didn't even see what that said. Lockbox. My head hurts, my tire's flat, and the phone's not working. Is someone sub is someone trying to stop me from leaving Paints Creek? Am I close to discovering something? Uh -uh. What about me? Oh god, I thought he was the one. I was wrong. He's not the killer. He's not. Nobody's watching me, are they? They were watching Steven, like, I think this was two years ago? It's 1999 now, right? Nobody is here anymore, right? He's on to me. I had to hide the key in one of the drains. God damn it. <laughs> What's the button for? What button? Where is this? It's in the mansion somewhere. Ever since I received the messages and the key, I've been following this anonymous person blindly. What a fool I have been. I need to revisit my investigation notes and see if I might have missed anything important. I like this. Uh, that's like a subtle note to uh, to you, the player. Uh, make sure you do that. I looked through the alibis recorded by Sheriff Howard. There were six interviews. Then I noticed it. One of them is lying. I think maybe more than one of them were lying. It was recorded that there was an event, yet I remember reading somewhere that it was canceled. Yep. I just realized the E in all the killer's messages is slightly off in comparison to all the other letters. If I can find that typewriter, I can find who killed Vivian? What? That's Steve Moss's story. Uh, so there's something janky about the typewriter writing the letters, the E key thingy was off a little bit. So Scott's typewriter isn't the one that had been writing those letters? It was a different typewriter? Yet another creeper? Whenever we find Father Matthew's secret room, that's gonna be gross. <laughs> God damn it, I have to search for fucking more storm drains. I haven't found a key in any of them yet. I'm not sure what it would go to. What did he say? You know, I'm also wondering why Sophia showed herself to us. After we were in Andrew's house, was that just... Creep Factor? Or is there like a story reason? Is he the one that really struck the final blow on her? God damn it, where is this fucking drain? Oh fuck. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh goddamn. I fell through the world. That scared me. <sighs> I have to wait. I have to wait for my heart to reset. <laughs> Falling through the world jump scares me. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. We better start over. Fuck. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, I I encountered a bug that enabled me to not be able to move. I, I I encountered a bug that caused me to be unable to move properly. Thank you. Fuck, where? What have we done? What have we not done? Oh my god. Did I get the car key stuff? I got that, uh, one of them was lying. Okay, I think this is 
This is what I found in the, um, the thing. In the lockbox. That was the last thing that I found. Great. So I guess when you come to the outside world, it just sets you in front of the, uh, <sighs> the sheriff outpost. All right, where are all these fucking drains? Are there any, are they all off of only main roads? Are there any here? I am the drain hunter. I hunt the drains. I have only seen them off of main roads. Oh my God, no, not again. If I go far enough, ah. Uh. <laughs> if I could just walk a little bit underneath the map, maybe I can find what I'm looking for. Oh, there's something funny right there. Okay, let's try this again. I've walked that path before and I didn't fall through it. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Fuck, I feel like I've been on every road now. This is like my one lead left to find new things. I had to hide the key in one of the drains. I, I, I mean, this could be by the hospital or the mansion too. There's this. That's probably in the mansion. Let's go look. Actually, is that here? <laughs> Did they have the same lamps? It's next to a bookcase though. It's possible that everywhere has the same lamps. That could be the church, that could be the mansion. Let's check out the church, because, um, yeah. Uh, they have these instead. Maybe they're different, uh, back here. That is different. Okay. Fair. Let's check the upstairs ones. Oh, yeah, he's got- yeah, there's a button there. Push. Ah, you motherfucker. Nah. <laughs> okay. Alright. Another thing I can't open yet. Oh, Jesus Christ on a cracker. So my biggest things right now that I'm trying to get into is the secret room in the church, which I need a key for. Charles' desk drawer, which is the night, the, um, the chess puzzle, and the fucking clock. There's other things that are still locked or closed to me, but those are the things I know I can even get into in the first place. I better go back to the mansion and make sure I haven't seen like a chessboard somewhere. Guess we can check Wanda and Bernard, just check everybody's fucking houses. Something like the code for Aunt Cecilia's apartment, that could be a complete red herring too. I don't think we can open this. Oh, it's jammed. Hmm. I wonder if he maybe threw the key down one of those things and like it washed away and it's on the floor in the sewer somewhere. I don't think there's anything left for us in here. What the fuck? <laughs> Did I... Forget to pick that up? Oh my god. How many times have I had to eat my words playing this game? I don't see anything off about the E. And in reading this, the E's are in line with everything else. So it was a different typewriter. 
that someone wrote those messages on. So I have a key to the church. Uh, maybe that opens that other room upstairs? Hmm. Is this Matthew? There's no clean water. This is from his mission trip. Why are these highlighted? They're major expenses. I don't understand. Robert's family looking for a new maid. Sophia has settled in nicely. I have so much to show her. I see. So this is how you figure out where his uh, one of his favorite places is. And that's it for Matthew Brooks's story. Yeah, that was all. I was supposed to find this stuff earlier, I think. Damn. Okay. Um. I still don't know what to do now. I gotta figure out the chest drawer. I feel like that... I feel like I should be able to do that, except it's not working. <laughs> uh, I don't know.